welcome to the Unity Guys Expert Interview Series. My name is Clayton Stenson, and I'll be your host today. This series is brought to you by Unity Guys Incorporated, where we help develop unity within companies running on the entrepreneurial operating system. We do this through fractional integrator services and relationship coaching for the visionary integrator. And the reason I started this interview series is that I've met some pretty amazing people in recent years, and the conversations we've had have been valuable to me, and I thought I should share them with other people to add value to them as well. And today's guest is Frankie O'Brien. Frankie is an EOS implementer in Calgary, where I live. Welcome, Frankie. Hello. Awesome. So today, we're going to do a little bit differently. We're going to just kind of talk about the integrator journey a little bit. And we're going to start. Uh, so I was at the EOS conference uh, last week. And I was in uh, Frankie's former visionary, well, I guess current visionary, sort of as well. Like you guys are kind of working together again. Yeah. Uh, he did a he did a um, breakout on how to delegate and still sleep at night. And in that, he shared a story about someone in his company who challenged him. And I have the the exact words here that he said and asked him, "Why did you hire me if you're going to do my job for me?" And I'm just wondering, and I kind of was wondering in the meeting too, if that was you that said that. And was that you, Frankie? <laughs> Very well, it could have been. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that is a statement that I one time made to Chris. Yes. So tell us about it. What was the story? What was happening at the time? You know what? This is actually like well before EOS in all reality. It was before we knew any conversations around like seats in a company called Visionaries and Integrators. It was really mm -hmm. all about just saying seriously like hey i know what i'm supposed to be doing right now i, I understand what i'm accountable for you got to let me run you gotta let me do this or yeah. really i can go find another place of employment that'll let me kind of use my abilities and you can take care of this and so obviously trying to find the best way to say it but ultimately in my true fashion of just being like i'm going to be up front and quick to the point and it was just like hey why Why are you hiring me, man? If, if you're really just going to do my job. And I think we actually had a conversation. I was like, well, if you just need like a friend or something, man, like I'll hang out with you on weekend. But <laughs> so, yeah, we had a good laugh about it. But truly, it was even before EOS. But yeah. it does go to show like there are certain people that are really designed to do certain roles in companies. And it was yeah. really clear that I was like, I know what I need to do here. Mm -hmm. Just had to figure out what that was together. What What role were you in at that time? Uh, I think it was called like an account manager. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, I, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure people that are listening to this, that are integrators probably could relate right to that moment where they, they need to say that. And, you know, I actually have, um, you know, experienced that multiple times where, where the visionary is kind of micromanaging and not letting mm. you run. I didn't experience that though. The first, with my first, well, sorry, my first EOS visionary. Yeah, he just he just basically said, "You do this. I'm going to go buy another company, and uh, you do, you let me yeah. not mean anything," <laughs> which was fortunate <laughs> for me. It made the transition yeah. a lot easier. Um, so, so from there, like you didn't know about EOS at that point. Tell us a little bit about the journey. Like, how did you how did you how much longer was it after that that you discovered EOS and what was that? I mean, that's taken us back a little bit. I'm not certain around that exact time. Yeah. I cannot I can yeah. only say for sure that like this was prior to a lot of things that had changed in our business. And you know, as a sporting goods distribution company, we were doing well with the the brands that we were representing. Uh, we had one brand that was exceedingly well, and unfortunately, at some point after that. Um, Chris and I really began to understand how to work together, um, but this supplier, as any distributor knows, they they kind of only have two options, right? A supplier comes in and you do a really poor job and the supplier leaves you, or you come in and this, you do a really great job as their distributor and the supplier says, thank you so much for building this up. We'll take it from here and therefore they leave you. And so we had the second one happen to us that they said, it's it's time. And uh, that at the time represented about 70% of the business. Mm -hmm. So until that point, we had been working off a few different efforts on systems and nothing had really stuck. But mm -hmm. then EOS is what was, uh, what was the one that really took us to the next level after that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of where for us, we really realized what these names were. But mm -hmm. honestly, Clayton, like prior to that, we started to understand who we were and mm -hmm. how we would work together. 
we just mm-hmm. merely got titles then. How did you figure it out? How to work together? You put it the way you put it. I think honestly, it was just the same thing I've I've told people over and over. It was just the ability to be open and honest with each other. Um, mm-hmm. I, I sit down with any and every client and say like, that's one of the key pieces. If you really want to get farther along on this journey and, and really have EOS really work for you, you've got to be open and honest and be willing to be vulnerable. And mm-hmm. Chris and I did that well. Uh, I think to be fair, I think there was a little bit of surprise on Chris's part because I, I, I was someone who was already ready to do that and be an open and honest. And so that's where a statement like the one you commented at the very beginning came from, which obviously would have been a little bit more of a shock to him. We're like, wait, wait, what? But then it was like, wow, I have this guy that is ready to do this. And it didn't take Chris long at all to realize, well, this would be better for us. So he jumped on board as well. And we both were open and honest with each other. And yeah, that's really what the key was. There's no special ingredient and class you have to go to it was really just are you willing to just be honest Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's it is very simple but it's amazing and actually at the conference last week I was blown away by uh, every keynote speaker touched on this Mm. like touched on vulnerability touched on open and honest Uh, the the first speaker Benny Fisher was like ridiculously vulnerable like shockingly like cried multiple times yeah, I was crying. He lost a child. I lost a child. Like it was just really uh, amazing. And then, and then Justin Moss wrapped it up at the end. This he g- gave everybody one of these. The speed of vulnerability yeah. determines the speed of breakthrough. And again, was very vulnerable about his current, not his EOS implementer business, but his other business that he has and some mistakes that he made in the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Right. And I was just, I was just amazed at the level of openness and vulnerability that that people had and it was such a great example yeah um, but just like in your in your marriage you know if you're not if you're not open and honest and you know addressing the stuff that needs to be addressed like you're creating bitterness and resentment and undercurrent oh, yeah. complexity and you know um you can't operate that way no not not successfully not healthy you know no. i mean you're you're either basically putting up walls or tearing down walls. Um, yeah. But there's always a wall somewhere, right? There's always something yeah. that has this opportunity for you, whether it is in business or in a marriage. And yeah. the the key that I have found over, you know, a few years now, it yeah. is open and honest. And the mm-hmm. faster we get there, yeah, the faster we do have those breakthroughs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that doesn't make it easy. And no, no, it's not easy. You know, that's the thing I think that people sometimes forget, like, oh, you make it sound so simple and so easy. It's it's not. It's just being yeah. willing and yeah. then go do the hard work. Yeah. But now instead of doing it on your own or instead of doing it where you're like, I'm not going to tell anyone, I'm just going to work harder. You're actually now saying, I'm going to work together as a team. I've shared this. So the burden is lighter because more people are helping us through it. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, that's mm-hmm. huge. Yeah, that's good. So um, I'm an integrator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I, you know, used to have a tendency to kind of be biased, you know, towards the integrator. Clearly, right? yeah. You know, uh, especially in the early years, I would, you know, kind of judge the visionary and kind of, you know, pr- be unfair to them, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, and over the years, I've been able to try to, and I'm still biased, but not as biased. <laughs> but the, the reason I'm saying this is I think sometimes the visionary gets the, gets the, you know, that label uh, yeah. or can get labels uh, that, are, that are unfair. So I'm curious, the reason I set that up is I'm curious, you know, t- could you tell us an example of when the visionary, when Chris called you out on something, the way that you, you know, you did about the, the first question that I, I said? Yeah, I think <laughs> Chris and I have a very good relationship. Um, we still work together hand in hand as much as we possibly can, right? Like we're, we're friends. We, yeah, we're, we're good. Um, but one of the things is in, in a biased sense, right? Like an integrator, typically speaking is very uh, high fact finder, high follow through. Like we know what we got to do. Let's go execute on this plan. And the visionary usually is kind of the opposite of that. A lot (laughs) more creative, a lot more out there and willing to just quick start on any idea that comes to yeah. their mind yeah. and I think because of that what I found with Chris and I I'll just say with Chris and I is yeah. we would have a conversation and we would end that conversation and I would leave it knowing like okay this was our plan this is what we discussed 
And he would leave it sometimes, not all the time by any means, but sometimes with the probably half of what we talked about because his brain was going somewhere else. And so then when we would come back to it, I developed this habit of being like, dude, I already told you this. So don't you remember? I talked to you. I told you this once, twice, like, and one day he finally did just say, Hey, it hurts me when you say that, like, I need you to understand. Like, I, I, it's not like I don't care. It's not like I'm not listening to you. I just, I got distracted by something or I forgot. And like, Mm -hmm. we don't all have the same, you know, ability to remember everything. And so it was one of those moments I would say where, yeah, Chris called me out on it, not in a mean way, not in a bad thing, but just in a, Hey, you don't see this, but I do. Mm-hmm. And it, it helped me tremendously because it wasn't just at work that it would help right now that I can yeah. take that learning everywhere else. And I'd love to say like, I'm, I'm like, I don't do that anymore, but I mean, I, there's plenty of times where I still <laughs> catch myself and be like, Oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Yeah. But it's, an area an example as you asked for an example where he mm-hmm. definitely called out I was like yeah. hey don't do this yeah and I think that's that's the challenge I think for every everyone but if we keep it in the visionary integrator context you know the the way that we naturally are we just expect other people to be that way <laughs> right so you know the visionary is like why don't people get this <laughs> right like mm-hmm. it's so obvious Right. But in a different way. And the integrators on the other side thinking, seeing it differently. And be like, why don't you get this? Like, yeah. it's so obvious. Right. Like, it's just second nature for me. Yeah. Right. And that's where that, you know, I love that. I love that example. Right. Because he, he challenged you and said, Hey, you know, I don't, I'm just, I'm not like you. Yeah. Right. And, and that's not a bad thing. That's okay. Right. Yeah. But when you, when you say that, it bothers me and I can, I can hear uh, my wife and I having a similar conversation. <laughs> I think another part though, that's really key is it, it's not just like, okay, I was open with him and I was honest, but it was that vulnerable piece. And to me, the vulnerable piece is usually tied to something around an emotional side. And mm-hmm. the emotional thing for him was that he was able to truly say like, Hey, it, it actually hurts my feelings. Like mm-hmm. that's not something that usually you hear men say to each other. Right. But we had developed a relationship where it was like, we weren't just going to be open and, you know, willing to listen and honest, hey, I'm going to tell you the truth. But we were able to be vulnerable and be like, this might cause pain for me. You could use this against me. You could make fun of me with this. But he was like, I'm willing to do it. Now, partly, obviously, yeah, he knew my character and knew I wouldn't do that. But that doesn't mean you're 100% sure, right? There's still something in you that's like, oh, man. But he was willing to be vulnerable. And that made it more important for me to say, well, I got to work on this. Not mm-hmm. to say I would never if he just said, hey, I don't, I don't remember the same things that you do at all times. There would have been truth to that. But when he was willing to be vulnerable and say, hey, this is how I feel about it. For me, it was like, oh, that dialed up the importance of why I needed to make that adjustment in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. And I think I'm sure there's people listening to this or watching this that are can relate, right? I, I can I can relate. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first visionary, this is pre EOS. I was not good at this, right? Like I was raised in a family where you don't talk about your feelings yeah, until it's a explosion. Um, you know, so I didn't know how to do it and he didn't either. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, uh, and it caused problems mostly because I bottled things up, right? Like I would just like, okay, you know what? I didn't like that he did that, but he's the boss and I'm an employee and, you know, you know, I, I'm just gonna, you know, just swallow that. Yep. Right. But just take that's, it. That's risky. Yeah. In the short yeah, term, can... it's easier, but. Oh, for sure. Right. You, you can walk away with that and be like, no, I'm just going to secure my job and keep my job. But in reality, all that really does is, is push it to a point where it is going to just explode. And then not only are you going to lose your job, but you potentially lose some friends. You potentially lose like respect, maybe even self-respect and a new opportunity in the future that someone would have probably given you a good referral for. But now they're like, I don't know, man, like that relationship ended pretty sour. And so it's like, it's never really going to be better to hold it in. I fully understand why we do at times. And mm-hmm. there are times where you have to be smart and be like, hey, this isn't the appropriate time to share this. Yeah. Don't bring it up immediately if it's yeah, a- right? very high emotions, right? Yeah sleep on it <laughs> but you got to make sure you understand right like that they just you don't hear stories about how like oh it was so much better that i never told anyone it was so much better that one day i blew up like that's not the story you hear 
so glad I bottled that up. Yeah, exactly. And full and angry. <laughs> yeah, it really prepared me for my next marriage. Like that's that's where those go, right? And so it's like, no, let's find a way to be open, honest, vulnerable. And mm. you're, you're going to see the success in that in so many areas of life. Yeah, and I, I'll just back to my first visionary. I Seven years I worked with him. And, you know, as I journeyed through that, I, I did become better at it, right? Like I did become better at, you know, speaking up. Like one example, he, he texted me one time at like 10 o'clock at night on a Friday night and said, we need to meet on Monday morning. Yeah. No context. Yeah. Thank you. You've ruined my weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, you know, I had a horrible weekend and then Monday morning we met and I said, can you never do that again, please? <laughs> And he's like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Can you not text me like some cryptic message like that at, at the end of a Friday night? Like you ruined my entire weekend. And he's like, yeah. you know, and, and that, I'm glad I said it. And he's like, oh man. Like it was like Justin Moss oh, said, yeah. it, like stabbed in the front. Oh yes. Right? And he yeah. was like, oh, wow. Thank you for yeah. telling me that because I, I, it didn't even cross my mind. Like there was no oh, yeah. intent at all, right? But he never did that again. Yep. Right. And, and that's an opportunity for, for us to help each other grow. Oh, right? goodness. Yeah, man. And, and that's the thing is like, so often people aren't actually jerks. They're not actually no. trying to be mean. They just didn't realize they didn't think like the other person on the other end and they'll keep doing it until someone says it, not mm -hmm. because they're trying to hurt you but because mm -hmm. they didn't know. Yeah. So that was kind of an example. And I was extremely nervous to say that to him. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But he received it really well, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. So I just encourage people that are listening, like if this, you know, if you're in a situation like that, like you get your heart right before you do it. Sure. Right. And make sure that you're not like attacking um, yeah. because that won't go well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's why, you know, um, <laughs> that's why scripturally it talks about being, uh, you know, quick to listen and slow to anger it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you might not feel anger sometimes it just means mm -hmm. that you're like pause for a second let's slow down listen to what was actually said maybe replay it and mm -hmm. then make that decision as to what you need to do and more often than not it won't actually lead to anger it'll lead to okay here's the fix yeah, here's yeah. what i need to share yeah yeah i find that you know in those kinds of situations i'll say something like i don't think you meant it this way yeah like just giving them the benefit of the doubt. I don't think yep. you meant it this way, but when you said this, this is how I interpreted it and how it made mm -hmm. me feel. Am, am I right? Am I, am I on the right track or am I off track? Right. right? You know, like yep. just can give me your perspective. And usually it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, no, I didn't mean it like that, but I can see mm -hmm. how you interpreted it that way. And I'm, I'm really sorry. Yeah. You know, I'm not to do that again. So um, I'm sure you, oh, you guys worked together a long time. I'm sure you had a lot of, we did, man. We we had a, a number of times. And and that I mean, when you say it like that, it makes it sound like, whoa, man, you guys had lots of issues. Well, everybody has issues. They're just no issues. Idea. Let's just put them on a board and let's get them solved kind of thing, work together with it. But I would say that, yeah, over time, um, we began to get to the spot where it was like, hey, we we already know like that is not the way you you meant it. And then we could make a choice. We're like, yeah, I know he didn't mean to say it like that. I can move on. Or yeah. I know he didn't mean to say it like this, but I'm going to make sure he's aware. Like, Hey, I know you didn't mean this, but just so you know, this is kind of how it, it came across and yeah. it continued to help build us, make us stronger and better. Yeah. Because the truth is like, that was just about our relationship. Mm -hmm. But the key out of that was that really, while we were strengthening our bond and our relationship, it was making it so we could have strong relationships with our team. Right. And so like, you know, as the integrator, as you know, like you know, the entire leadership team that you're working with is, is reporting into that integrator. In this, and that's where, for me, it was like, man, everything Chris and I did allowed me to be better at working with all those, you know, teammates and, mm -hmm. and everyone else in the future. Like, I mean, it, it's not like I've only worked with Chris, right? I've worked with others and that those mm -hmm. learnings go with you. And, yeah. and then you were able to say, okay, that made me better for this next step, maybe better for the next step of my journey. And I mm -hmm. truly think it's, um, it's part of what makes me even a better implementer of it today, right? Like I no longer sit in the integrator seat within a company, mm -hmm. but I didn't forget all those learnings. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like, okay, now new thing. I have no idea what to do. And now I'm like, good. That helps me along the way. Mm -hmm. And it helps you be a better husband and better, better mm -hmm. father. And, and you, you said something about, you know, the leadership team and the impact on the rest of the co company. And it just reminded me like, um, how, what an incredible opportunity it is to model healthy. Yeah. Well, right. Like if you were a healthy visionary integrator, you're setting up, you know, because people just be, they become like the people they hang around with, right. Always. And they become like their leaders. Right. So if you're dysfunctional and unhealthy, it's going to, it's going to rub off and mm -hmm. vice versa. Right. So did you find that? Like, did you, did you, you know, see that happening within your organization? Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's a hundred percent accurate. You, you see that for sure. Like, and mm -hmm. it, it also was something where our, our team would know like, Ooh, they're, they're kind of going to battle right now, but it was wonderful because they also knew that it was like, Hey, they're going to come out of this United and we're going to be better for it as a company. But mm -hmm. there were times, yes, where it was like, you know, maybe we could have done a better job of like closing the door for a, a little moment kind of thing. But again, <laughs> things to learn from right and we're like oh man i didn't realize that one was gonna be as passionate as it is it got but that's mm -hmm. always what it was never once did i ever sit down with chris and say man i hate this guy i cannot do this anymore or i'm trying to hurt his feet like it was always like i'm trying to take what's best and he was trying to take what's best and and then i mean we'll stick with chris and frankie's name kind of idea right but i mean there are other people that i could say like well same kind of thing and fill in the blank person but yeah mm -hmm. and 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 back to the vulnerability piece like mm -hmm. this bookmark that justin gave you know if you're able to fight it out in a leadership team meeting the visionary yep. integrator you know are getting a little heated and worked up but then come to resolution yeah then i think it it allows other people like okay i can share my opinion 100 percent, right i can even if it if it, even if Frankie doesn't agree with it or, you know, or Chris doesn't agree with it. I can, I can put it on the table. We can have a healthy debate and battle about it. And then we can find, you know, resolution and agree going forward. Yeah, for sure. There's just, you know, a couple major keys to it is like, you have to be able to speak respectfully to one another and you have to allow everyone to have a chance to be heard. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a difference between, you know, like, oh, well, my ears do their active job of listening. Yep. Yep. I listen. Now you're done talking. Okay. My turn. Yeah. Versus, like I'm going to hear you. It It's mm -hmm. more than what your ears do. It's what your heart does. It's what your mind does. Right. I'm going to actually truly hear what you have to say. Ask maybe a question or two to make sure I understand it. Then we can find a way to actually have this true discussion around what mm -hmm. solve needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But Sometimes you can just see it. You can see it in the table where it's like, oh yeah, that person's just waiting for the next person to stop talking so they can start talking. And that's not, that's not hearing someone. Mm -mm. No, that's good. That's good. And as an integrator, I think, you know, you have the opportunity to invite people in, mm -hmm. right? Like I have, I've had people that are very quiet on the leadership teams, you mm -hmm. know, but I, I find quite often, you know, still waters run deep, right? Yeah. Like quite often, you know, quiet people have have a lot to say and you oh, yeah. invite them right to say hey gotta give them the the actual opportunity think? right like we've all said a, a lot here you know what do you think right yeah. like i want i want your input because i value your input right yeah. and you know you have a key part on this team like what, what do you think right and and they might say something where you're like well hmm, didn't see it that way right yeah. it's 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 a it's a tricky and challenging thing you know, to, to navigate, but man, is it beautiful when it, when it, when it comes together and all the ideas are on the table and we can arrive at the best. Yeah. Best thing. So uh, you're fighting for the greater good, then you're, you're going to be in a good spot. You're fighting for yourself. It doesn't usually work out. No, but when you do it and it works well, like, man, you come out of there, you feel great. Yeah. Right. It's like, man, that was awesome. Like we, you know, we had, we, you know, battle it out but we come away feeling like okay but we got a plan and we agree yes. and it's not always perfect like somebody has to break the tie sometimes right and uh -huh. and make the call um but but yeah it's it's fun when you really you really everybody's open and honest and that's great and even if you were to walk out of that meeting right and i i 
tell this to clients, you know, at the end of the day, if you truly were like, wow, we didn't come to an agreement, but this was so-and-so's choice. Like Clayton is the one that's accountable for this. So we're going to go with his way. The mm-hmm. key is to still walk out unified. Even if you and I disagreed on it, I've got to be able to say, all right, this is Clayton's show now. Like he's running this part of it. We're going to get behind him. What do you need from me? Rather than walking out and then immediately going to my team and be like, oh, well, this is the direction we're going. But Clayton's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So watch <laughs> it fail. And then we can all tell him we told him. So like, that's then- not a unified front. That's not a team. Yeah. That's just two different silos battling. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Um, so tell me a little bit about like, once you did implement EOS, what was that journey like? Uh, I would say that at the beginning, it was a little bit like, oh, good. Another system, um, <laughs> you know, like Chris read traction. I don't actually think he even read the whole book. I think he read the first couple chapters and then was like, Frankie, you got to read this. This is how we're going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, cool. And then I started reading it. And I was like, man, this, this actually would work. Cause this isn't trying to like change all these things. It's really just taking what we kind of do. Well, some stuff we don't do well, they're just practical tools that we're implementing now. And it gives us this opportunity to be like, okay, we are accountable. We're going to do it right. And in doing that, I would say it went from like pretty quickly from a, oh good, another system to oh good, we have a system. Mm -hmm. And that allowed us to actually be like, no, now we know what we're doing. And quite frankly, I think the biggest thing really was for Chris and I of knowing like, okay, now this is clear of like what it is you're supposed to be doing Mm -hmm. and what I'm not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it was like this like muddy water kind of thing. And most of the time we were each in our own spots doing our things and then help each other here or there. But every now and then, and it wouldn't just be Chris or I, but somebody else would kind of be in that area. And you're like, whoa, that's why this isn't working because you're working on something you shouldn't be working on. Mm-hmm. You need to you need to work on what you're good at and what you're doing. And so mm-hmm. it helped us really solidify our roles and where we were supposed to be. And mm-hmm. in doing that, man, it, it didn't take long for us to see that EOS would actually work. Yeah. And then yeah. really it 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 isn't the thing that saved it. Let's let's make sure we're not, you know, giving more credit to the system that need be, but man, through EOS, we were able to make some pretty solid strides with that company and yeah. build it to the point where we had not only grown it and yeah. brought back people that we had to let go and, and seen, you know, numbers and revenue that we'd never seen, mm-hmm. but we honestly got what we wanted out of it in so many other ways. And people were mm-hmm. able to take their careers to the next level and Chris yeah. was able to get to a point where he was ready to do his next journey, which happened to be becoming an EOS implementer and then eventually yeah. selling the company, which was a dream of like, man, what, it, what if we could do this one day? And like all these things started happening. And again, not to pretend like it's all due to one thing, but I don't think those things happen without EOS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, I love EOS, uh, but I think the reality is you need a system, mm-hmm. right? Like, regardless of what system you use you need you need one yeah. right it's it's just like the, i'll just explain it this way um company i'm working with right now we bought uh everybody the book uh what the heck is eos yeah right not everybody but the kind of the the core leadership team and okay. and i was speaking with uh one of our pms and she's like yeah there's been some pushback like what is the system and you know uh why are we doing this and and she said she just told him, read the book, <laughs> like read the book, because yeah. if you read the book, you'll be like, oh, wow, this is good, yeah. right? Like we, we need this. And this is like everything that we've been complaining about will be resolved if we implement this. And yeah. that person read the book and was like, dang, you're right. Like this yeah. is, we need this. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's what I've experienced, <laughs> you know, in the companies that I've worked with, you know, people are just thankful to have a, a shared vocabulary, yeah, right, that we can all agree on, an outlet for issues, mm-hmm. right, to be solved, right, and then, uh, you know, and then a shared vision that we can all yeah. work for it and clarity and all the things that it brings. But, um, and that's why I say it's not, it, it's not to uh, make light of EOS by any means, but it, yeah. it is work. You have to be willing to put in the work, right? And so reading the book is key. Mm-hmm. 
but doing the work, mm-hmm. that's what's really yeah. going to make it work. Right. And, you know, when we began, there was the book traction period. That was the <laughs> nice, smaller, you know, easier to go through what the heck is EOS book. We didn't even have the get a grip book kind of thing. We, we had traction. And so when you're giving that to someone, it feels a little bit like you're going back to school and, you know, and you're like, oh my, but man, now like the, the, the resources we have make it. So yeah, hundred percent. It's not just that senior leadership team, the mid-level, the, the every level can start to really get a better concept as to what this is and why it is there, why I would even do it. And mm-hmm. the truth is like every company I've ever been a part of or connected with in any way is on an operating system. Mm-hmm. Just most of them are on like, you know, the succeed in spite of myself operating system kind of thing. <laughs> it, like, they don't know what they're running on, but they're running on something. <laughs> well, they're running on multiple things probably. Yeah. <laughs> right. Everybody's got their own perspective of how it should be done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to come back to one thing you said, and then we're getting close to time here. Uh, you said you talked about resolving issues and, you know, how it sounds like we had so many issues. And yeah. uh, I, I love that. And the reality is, yes, we all have issues, right? Yeah. Every company has issues. And that's the point, right? Yeah. And and I, I just, I remember most of the time when I start with a fractional client, it's like, you know what? Stop trying to think, stop thinking that someday we'll arrive and we won't have issues, right? Like, the, the, the real question is, how do we address issues? Yeah. Right. Are we going to talk about them behind the back? Mm-hmm. Right. Are we going to gossip or are we going to put it on the table and work together to solve it? Right. And I thought that's one, the, one of the things I love most about EOS and, and the, vision oh, yeah. of the greater relationship. It's like, okay, you know, every day there's issues. Every there are. day. Yeah. Um, and how do we solve them though? That's, that's, that's the thing that most is most important. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Every, every great team, man, they, the, you got a really good opportunity to, to work on issues, to bring them to the right people to help solve them uh, mm-hmm. or try and hide them, you know, mm-hmm. try and sweep it under a rug, but they're going to have issues yeah. no matter what you're going to have. Yeah. Them. And I think our culture, and this is maybe a bit of a tangent, but I'll just go there quickly. Our culture, you know, creates this unreasonable expectation that life is supposed to be easy. Marriage is supposed to be easy. You just live happily ever after, you know, um, and there's not going to be issues and it doesn't help. It doesn't help um, life to go easier when we think that way. Right. Yeah. It's just, there's issues and it's okay. It's not a, it's not the sky isn't falling. Right. Yeah. Okay. We've got an issue. Let's, let's work on it. Right. So yeah. for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you, Frankie. Yeah. It's, been, it's been great. Uh, if someone wants to learn more about you and about EOS and what you do, how how should they get in touch? You know, the easiest way in all reality is, is to send me an email. Um, I have a LinkedIn profile, yes, but the truth is, you know, you're going to get faster and better response if we connect, you know, over an email and a phone call in person, those kind of things. So yeah. it's uh, frankie.obrien at eosworldwide.com. Awesome. That's, that's the email. Um, I'm sure Clayton can, you know, add things and connect things later, but definitely, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to be able to talk with you today, Clayton. Yeah, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. And I'll put, I'll put his email in the show notes as well. So you can find it there. Uh, so on behalf of our viewers, thank you again, Frankie, for joining us. Yeah. And thanks for sharing your story and your passion. I know uh, it's not, it's not an easy journey, you know, learning, learning all this stuff. So I'm sure it's going to be helpful for those that watch. So If today's interview added value to you, please subscribe to this channel for future interviews with experts in the world of business.